Hey guys, John here from The Holy Ale. It's been a long time, a lot's been going on, but I just wanted to have a quick little uh, catch up with you guys. Uh, sorry for the boring bedroom backdrop, but uh, we'll throw a few goodies in here for you. I've just come back from a trip to Tassie, which I've just totally fallen in love with the place. We just stayed around Hobart um, and just saw all the sights there. And of course, we had the little one looked after, so I just did everything that we can't do when you've got a little kid running around. We went to Cascade Brewery, Lark Distillery, just ate in nice restaurants, all that stuff that you can't do when you've got that little guy who's a ball of fun, but just, you know, it, it, it makes it hard to do the finer things in life, doesn't it? Anyway, so little, little few things I got along the way. Lark Distillery, absolute awesome place. Um, checking this place out was just an absolute mind-blowing experience because it's... It's not one of these big grand, like you imagine the, the Scottish uh, distilleries being some sort of big grand establishment sort of thing. Um, not that I've been there. But you go to Lark and it's just, it's in beautiful hillside country, uh, wine region, Cold River. And it's just a shed, you know, it's just a shed that anyone could have, you know, in their backyard. A few sheds on, on the lot. And they've got all the gear in there and it's, it's no frills. But there's just some good down-to-earth people there. They're bottling everything by hand. Um, they've got the fermenters around everywhere, and we've got to um, taste um, the different stages of fermentation. Tasted the mash, tasted straight from the still, um, and different barrels. Just went into their barrel sections, and they had, you know, here, oh, here's a one-year, try that. Here's a three-year in the barrel, try that, and then the finished product. Even got to try a new barrel aged gin that no one had ever tried before, head distiller came down and said, have a crack at this one guys, you know, don't ask us for, you know, what's in it because we didn't write it down, just that happy go lucky kind of attitude that, um, you know, it's great to see, especially when they're making world class whiskey, so that was a highlight of the trip. Um, what else has been going on? Had a brew day the other day, sorry I just got a open window here and I'm feeling a bit self-conscious when people walk past. Um, I had a brew day the other day and it was absolutely, absolute chaos. I have been brewing a lot, but I've been trying to fit in as much as I can. And um, Saturday I was supposed to brew. I was going to wake up early and brew. Um, but the missus said, quite rightly, you need to go buy a suit for this thing we've got coming up. That's the only day you've got to do it. You, 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 sh you should go do that and then brew when you get home. So, okay. So I hate shopping. Absolutely crazy day at the shops at the mall. What did I just say mall? I'm watching too much freaking American TV. Um... So anyway, I go there, it stresses me out, I hate it, pull my hair out, finally get a suit, get home and think, oh, it's getting late, I need to start brewing, get in there, heat up the water, everything's going crazy, and um, I'm just, my head isn't screwed on straight, I don't, I don't have that zen-like, um, you know, head brewer focus that you need when you're, uh, you know, making something, um, you know, when you're crafting something from scratch. So, it didn't go very well. Okay, I filled up my urn with water, hit it up, checked out the strike water, perfect temp, going to put my grain in, and I've forgotten to put the bag in. Right, so I'm just putting water, uh, grain straight into the hot water in my urn. Um, fair bit of it too. I'm like, what the hell do I do now? So I'm cursing and running around, and um, I think, alright, awesome. I'll drain it into some containers, I'll tip out the grain that's in the urn, I washed it out, got it all ready, put the bag in, poured all the stuff back in, so it was essentially as it would be, and I think, great, fantastic, this is going to be awesome. So I start, get my big plastic bag, putting it in, giving it a stir with one hand with a mash paddle, and slip with the plastic bag, part of my grain bill goes all over the ground, Ugh. and um, at this point, I just, a calm washed over me, and I saw the irony. The, uh, so I saw the, um, you know, just, just saw the, the comedy, comedy in it all, the humbling, very humbling experience. So I um, picked up what I could off the ground, chucked it back in, thought there's going to be dirt, everything in there. I need as much grain bill as I can. I'm just going to go for it. Um, luckily, it was an ESB, so it was pretty high alcohol content already, so, and it, I didn't lose too many points, so I reckon, you know, it's going to be a cracker. It's going to be a winner. I've pushed through, persevered, so that's always going to be good. Now, before this video gets too long, I'm going to get onto something else. 
I've had a few brews since last time we spoke, but um, this one is only a couple of weeks in the bottle. I thought I'd try this one here, which has been sitting here uh, warming up slightly. I only put this in this morning, and it's only early afternoon, so I haven't even you know rested it in the fridge for a while like you should. But um, just really, uh, I've had a tough week. I really just want to get into get into something new, and I'm pretty excited to taste this because this is uh, from the recultured Cooper's yeast that I um, cultured up from the uh, Cooper's Pale Ale. So um, that was good. I reckon it's going to be great, uh, or it's going to be very good. We shall see. So this is basically just a base malt with a little bit of wheat, um, Pride of Ring Ringwood for bittering, and Waiiti. You might have seen my video a little while back, and if you haven't, go check it out. It only goes for 20 seconds or something. Uh, Waiiti hops. Um, smell delightful, and this is the first beer that I've made with it. I've made another one, which is uh, fermented at the moment. I'm going to be bottling tomorrow. Uh, but this is the first one. So... Um, as I said, only been two weeks, so it's not quite ready, really, but let's just see what we've got. Ah, before I do, this video's gonna go for ages. I don't care, I love it. Here we go. I've been reading this book. Tasting Beer by Randy Mosher. Absolutely smashing read, I suggest you get into it. But anyway, one point from there, um, is he says, pouring down the side of the glass is for sissies. So what you need to do, especially with bottled beer, mm, it smells like beer, is um, you've got to pour it straight down the glass and get heaps of head on it. Wait for the head to go down, top it back up, top it back up as much as you need to, and that's going to give you a good solid head on the beer. And they even said back in um, the ye olden days that um, people were a bit sceptical if the beer came too quickly. At the bar, they thought, oh, they haven't really done their job there. So it's very interesting. So, all right, I don't want to be a sissy, you know. Apparently that's what sophisticated people do. So, um, let's just pour straight down the middle. It's definitely carbonated for just a couple of weeks. Mmm, -hmm, you can't see it, so I'll put it up higher. Wow, so there you go, Randy. Is that what you were after? It's looking like Cooper's. Can I get that closer? I know the focus will go out a little bit, but it's definitely got that Cooper's uh, look to it. It's cloudy as all shit, which is all right. I don't mind any of that. That's got a good head that's staying there. Smelling the pineapple. Now that is exactly what my um, hydrometer sample smelt like from the one that I got brewing at the moment. So that is without a doubt the Waiiti hops. When I smelt it on the other one I thought, oh that, that, that must be the yeast, but then I thought, no no, it's the Waiiti and this is different yeast, so there you go. Pineapple brilliance. I love that. Now, before I get into it, it is very cloudy, which is fine. I've been knocking that around a little bit and being Cooper's yeast, you want to actually mix it up there a little bit, so I'm quite happy with that. But um, I've noticed a few of my last couple of brews have been quite cloudy in general. And I think it's because of my bag that uh, might have a couple of holes in it. It's the same bag I've been using forever. So I've got a new bag, which I'll show you a bit later. Now, I, don't, I wonder whether it's worth topping this up again just to see what Randy was on about. Now, may I just say that this head is fan-bloody-tastic. I'm going to mess the camera up here because you need to have a look at this. Can you get a... Let me focus on that. Can I do it? Oh, wrong way. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. You need to check that out. That is... a cracker. And that has only been in the bottle for two weeks. As I bring myself back out of focus again. So, here we go. Thanks for sticking with me, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. That is a bit going on.
the pineapple-y hops are just, they're there, there's a die for. It's kind of a bit thick, it's a bit honey-like. I wonder if I mashed this, I've got to check whether I mashed it kind of high. It's got that kind of mouthfeel texture, like I probably would want it kind of dry, but it's fairly, that's got a fairly medium body to it for something so light. That is bloody fantastic though. You can get that, it's got that coopersy kind of taste on the yeast. It's got that kind of, that, oh, you've got the awesome pineapple, um, you know, summer fruit kind of um, smell and also you get that in the flavour as well. And um, you get that Cooper's kind of sour yeast taste. I, I, I taste it as a bit of a sour taste, like when I taste Cooper's and that's what I get here. Others may describe it differently. But um, the colour is very Cooper's-esque. Um, and I can't see through it for the life of me, it's cloudy as anything, but I did actually, I knocked it over a few times when I was getting started, and I think it fell over in the fridge, and it hasn't had long enough to clear, so it kind of makes sense, and as I said, being, using the Cooper's yeast, you, you want it to be a bit like that anyway, because you know, you want to get it, you know, get it all involved, it's got that... It's a fantastic beer, it's one of those ones that you could just drink heaps of, I'm bloody happy about this. Um, well, I'm excited. Alright, I'll get on with it. What I have here is um, the new bag. The new bag. So I keep looking at, that's me, but that's the lens. I'll look at you. Um, new bag from Zimash Master. This is from Craft Brewer. So I thought my bag's got holes in it. It's been a while. And this one said heavy duty. So this is going to be a heavy duty bag. It's round at the bottom. All right, round at the bottom, unlike my other one, which is a bit of a teardroppy sort of thing. So there we go, round at the bottom. Should fit snugly into the urn. All right, so that's going to be awesome. Um, we've got these loops here, right? There's loops all the way around. So now I use a bit of a pulley system with a carabiner. So I'm hoping this will make it really nice and easy that I will um, just hook all these loops onto the carabiner, pull the system away. Fantastic, because I'm all for things, but that feels really thick. I'm all for things being easier. That feels very thick. There's a, definitely a much different material that I'm that I'm used to. One's more of a sort of a cottony voil or a nylon voil, but you know, didn't seem as like this seems industrial sort of stuff. So this is good. This is going to be good. As I said, I've been reading a lot of this. Get yourself into this. It's a great read for just beer in general. It's not just tasting beer. It's whole beer history. It's just philosophy of beer. It's fantastic. This, uh, ladies and gentlemen, from Tasmania, the Moo Brew, the Imperial, what have we got? The Barrel Aged Imperial Vintage Release. I bought this. $25 for this little puppy. Um, it is an absolute, absolute amazing beer. Now, did I really like it? Well, let's find out. Wow. It, it, it tastes like a beer port. <laughs> Alright, so, very, very porty. Um, you know, which is good, but yeah, I don't know if I said it in the video, because um, I'm not sure what I cut in there, but it's basically, uh, to me it was a little bit like, we could, let's make a barrel, barrel aged beer, look, we stuck it in a barrel, here's the proof, because it tastes that much like port, okay, so, but it was very, it was a unique experience, I enjoyed it, I don't regret this for a second, and the Moo Brew variety of beers is just absolutely grade, grade A, um, so very happy to have tried that. Um, the Lark again, I'm going to try these on video here, for, I know this is a Holy Ale, but um, let's get a good look at this here, it is a uh, little collection of um, three different whiskies, we've got the Distillers Collection, we've got the Cask Strength, we've got their uh, standard, standard Edition, so this is very special, um, 
Um, we're going to be trying these um, on camera for the delight of everybody, unless I drink them with someone else later, but I'm sure I will involve you. Let me know in the comments below. I know there's not too many subscribers at the moment, but let me know. If you want me to share this with you, let me know. Otherwise, I'll share it with someone else. Um, so anyway, this beer is fantastic. We've got an ESB. Um, we've got another one just like this with a bit of crystal ready to bottle. Then I've got the ESB, and then, inspired by the barrel-aged Imperial Stout, I'm going to um, try a robust porter. And this is the thing. I can't barrel age it, but while I was at Lark, I got some Lark oak chips, which are supposedly from their barrels that they've made whiskey in, and they've put them in bags of wood chips that you can buy for smoking meat. Um, so I've got them, and I'm going to put them in beer. So check that one out. I might do a video about that one. Um, a bit of a, you know, follow along the beer. Because that one will be, if I do do that one, that one will be very special, and it may be my next brew. So, um... That may be something to look at and follow for. Anyway, I've babbled on long enough. That's a little catch up. If I've forgotten anything, then it probably wasn't that important anyway. Thanks for stopping by for a beer for me and um, check out the Holy Ale um, coming up. I'll check out your videos. Let's have a good time and um, cheers to beer.